Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Build Arendelle. Now, last episode, we built these towers, but they're a bit big, they're a bit chunky, and they don't quite fit the size of the castle. So what we did is, we've come back, made the platform larger, we kept the towers the same size, but we gave ourselves more space to work with to create the actual castle. What that meant is we had to grow the whole of the landscape as well. So you can see that's covered in rock, but not for long. I used Voxel Sniper now to overlay a bunch of dirt and grass to make it look a lot more natural, a lot like the Arendelle that you know. Now also, the nether brick rooftops that we had before were the wrong colour. They looked great, but they were red. So we've changed those out for a turquoisey style texture. And I've modified the sides of these towers a little bit more to make them thinner. I've chiseled away at them slightly, but what this has done is it's turned them into a kind of like more like an hourglass shape than a cylindrical tower. And while it still looks cool, it doesn't quite look right, so I might be coming back to these to make them a bit more cylindrical. But what we're doing first this episode is we're working on this large drum tower on the furthermost corner of Arendelle. Now I've been watching the movie loads, and luckily enough for me, it's out in Blu-ray, so check it out, it's amazing. Not sponsored by Disney at all, I swear. Uh, and it's just a really good movie. So uh, I've been watching that, and, and it's weird because now that I'm building Arendelle, I find myself looking at the castle and the buildings in the movie much more than the characters. And I still can't work out what this tower is for, specifically, but it's kind of like a cylindrical drum tower that gets thinner as it goes up. It reaches higher than the other guard towers, and the peaked roof at the top is thinner and spikier. So I got out some stone brick, and I slowly just began to climb up using circles that slowly got thinner and thinner. And it took me a long time to get this right, and I wasn't quite sure that my calculations were correct, because I was doing all this by hand. One of the advantages you have when you do things with a cylindrical tool, like a, a tool that creates cylinders, is you can be much more precise, and when you use numbers, there's much less that can go wrong. So I cut away at what I'd done already, and using the cylinder tool from World Edit, I began to create cylinders centered on the middle of this circle. And they started at about, oh, I think a radius of around 10 squares, and slowly got thinner and thinner as I went up. Now to start with, I went up by five blocks, but this left me with too much of a spike too early on. So I went down to the bottom, and I went up by seven instead to just increase the height overall of the cylindrical tower. Now again, like I said before, the problem that we had with the guard towers was, when I chiseled away at the corners, I made them make look a little bit like an hourglass, like they were kind of pyramidy, more than uh, cylindrical. And when I added some detail to the side of this tower as well, and copied it around, I was left with the same problem. It looked more like a spike than a cylindrical tower, so I cut out that detail, and left it circular. Now I added a few braces on the flat sides of these circles, as you can see here with stone brick and stone brick step, and those are just the little supporting struts underneath the windows and all the way down to the base of the tower. Now also I took another look at the movie and the pictures that I've got of Arendelle Castle, and the top of this tower has rough crenellations that kind of look like, um, I don't know, it's, it's, they're just jaggedy crenellations. And there's a smaller top of the tower that gets thinner, and a roof on top that reaches higher than the roofs around the other towers, but it's also much spikier, a lot like a wizard's hat. So I used stone brick, and I've also been using etched stone brick, chiseled stone brick, to add a lot more detail onto these, onto these buildings as well. Now I've done a rough peaked roof here, but I'm not really happy with that. So it's something I'm gonna come back to, to make it look a lot better, a lot spikier, and a lot bigger in general, a lot meatier. But before we do that, I'm coming over to this corner section of the castle to start work on the first of the walls. We've done pretty much all the towers, except for the square one at the back right that you can't quite see now. But I've come here to the front and I'm using oak planks to create this wooden peaked roof. It's quite a steep roof, but it connects in a kind of corner angle shape between these two towers on the left and right. And you can see there on the towers, those extra windows that I've added with iron bars. So I counted how far it was between the corner section and the towers with these blocks here, so that I could map out where to put the windows and how to keep them symmetrical. 
and then using oak wood blocks, oak wood stairs, and oak wood half blocks, I put in one window, two window, windows all the way around at even intervals. And here you can see the final results of that detail. So with that done, I came back to this tower and thought, you know what? No, I'm going to make this taller, more impressive, make it a bit fatter at the top as well. So using stone brick again and etched stone brick, and I used a, a few cobblestone walls here as well to, to pick out a bit more detail. And I just made the tower fatter, taller, and gave it a more impressive roof at the top. And there you go, the finished tower. You, didn't, you don't need to see me building that boring wizard's hat tower, but that boring wizard's hat's roof, but it does look really cool, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Now, in case you hadn't noticed, we've also switched our shaders over. We've got a different water shader now that gives us really impressive reflections in the water of the towers and walls that you can see. Now again, I came around to the corner section of the wall here and started to build up with stone brick with stone brick but the problem I had is and this is something that I'm troubled with because when I look at the movie the details on the wall well, there's, there's not much detail at all the walls are flat they're just flat with a bunch of brick texture and it makes sense because when you watch the movie you're not really paying too much attention to the castle's detail you're paying attention to the picture in general but most of the emphasis on detail goes into the characters and the effects and also the interiors but the exteriors you don't really see too much. So I'm trying to find the right balance of adding enough detail to the castle to make it look cool, but keeping it minimalist to keep it faithful to the movie. So what I'm doing is I'm ridging the top of these walls with some etched stone brick and some stone brick steps on the top and the bottom to give us a nice clear, thick top to these walls. I also used etched stone brick, and you can see the way the connected textures turn it into a pillar there on the right. And I was using this technique to add supports to the rooftops. And now once the detail on the front was done, I came around to the back to add some detail here. And after watching the movie though, I've realized that the detail on the inside of these walls is much more different. There's overhangs and canopies, and it's just a lot more decorative. So I'm going to have to come back around here and give this another pass to make it look correct to how the movie is. But for the time being, on this wall, we're pretty much done. I have to add a few stone brick steps here and there on the very corner bits. But for the most part, this bad boy is complete. Oh, and you can see it there as it reflects off the water. It looks fantastic. So one wall done. And we have a motif and a design and a pattern for how we're going to be building the rest of the walls. So without further ado, I came around to the other wall facing the, uh, this is kind of the outside wall. There's going to be a wall on the tower on the left here that comes out and has a lighthouse on. But this is pretty much the flat wall that connects to the sea wall and has a tower section in the middle. But according to the move, there's a bit more rock outside the front of this. So using Voxel Sniper, I threw down some stone with a brush tool smoothed it and eroded it off and began to build the sea wall that reaches out from the tower on the left and again i'm just using stone brick here and the stone brick in this texture pack is really good looking i built some steps down here towards the sea wall that were initially too shallow so i came back made them a bit steeper and connected them to the sea wall but the sea wall is a bit low it reaches up a little bit higher from the actual surface of the water but that's something I can fix later. First things first, I'm gonna work on crenellations and detailing along this sea wall. And because this texture pack is so rich and so well designed for medieval buildings, I can find that I don't have to put in as much detail physically, and I can rely on some of the textures to do the heavy lifting as far as detail goes. So just using etched stone brick and stone brick stairs, it was very simple adding the crenellations and details along this sea wall while keeping it looking crisp cool and true to the movie. Copying what I'd done on one side to the other. And then it was time to build the base for the lighthouse. Now the lighthouse reaches out from the water on its own little island, but this little island is kind of like a dome shape of stone brick or stone or brick, some kind of material. 
So what I'm doing here is making fatter layers of stone brick to create a kind of dome that sits on top of the water and will be the base for our lighthouse here on the edge. But I'm not going to build a lighthouse this episode. Instead, I'm going to come around here and again, copy over the wall section that we have from the corner onto the wall here. And you don't need to see me copy and paste that. But what you do need to see me do is create the tower in the middle of this wall. Now, most of these walls, they're separated on the corners by these large cylindrical towers with the blue peaked roofs. But in the middle of most of these walls is a smaller square tower section. And that's what we're building here. It reaches out just slightly from the wall itself. And I've connected it up there, connecting the roof as well. And I began to chisel away, creating a big door at the front. But also what it has is this cool pyramid style peaked roof right on top. Oh yeah, looking pretty good. And some nether brick half slabs on the sides just to give the border a bit more lip. I then carved in three windows in the front and I'm using iron bars to create the insides of the windows because in this texture pack, iron bars look fantastic. I cut away the corners of this tower to add a bit more detail, finish the doors on both sides and here as we spin around the castle, you can see the detail in complete, glorious, reflected finality. And now with that wall complete, it was time to come over to this last sea wall that's attached to this tall spiky drum tower and work on the central square tower here. But there isn't a tower in the middle of this wall, no. Instead, what the roof does is the roof peaks up violently. It peaks up really sharp and steeply into a big upside down wooden V. So using oak wood blocks, I created that V and it's got to connect seamlessly to the roof that's already there. Once that was in place, I softened it off, replacing some of those bricks with stairs. And I began to create the inside of the wall, adding three windows, two large and one small, to create that tower look. But that's not all. There's also six small half circle windows along the side of this wall. So I cut those out, mapping them out first with yellow wool, then cutting through those to create the windows themselves. And then I filled in the area between that with iron bars. And here as the camera spins around Arendelle and you can see the castle reflected with those new shaders in the water, you can see what we've done so far. Now, forgive me for saying this, the castle is in stone, but nothing is set in stone. We will be coming back to bits that we don't feel look quite right, to things that are lacking. We'll be coming back, trimming up detail and toying with what we've got there initially, making it look as complete as possible. But I've been Stjin and this has been Let's Build Arendelle. Hit like and favorite and subscribe if you want to see more. But until next time, guys, take care.